Integrating new systems can be daunting. As a developer, you often have to deal with bad documentation, lack of flexibility, unhelpful support, and you know the drill. That's why it's always been super important for us at Clerk to deliver a platform that's easy to understand, well-documented, and can be integrated into any existing platform on the market. Today, you'll see how. In this video, you will learn about the three core elements that are used for integrating Clerk. You'll get detailed knowledge of how the API works, how our JS library Clerk.js interacts with it, and how we build extensions that bundle everything into development-friendly packages. As you can probably imagine, this video will be fairly technical and is primarily intended for developers. However, even if you're not technical, you can still benefit massively from learning more about how platforms integrate on the internet. Let's get to it. If you're new to Clerk, here's a brief recap of what all the fuss is about. Clerk is an e-commerce personalization platform that makes your customers better customers for you. Clerk's artificial intelligence understands what consumers want to do next, and it's able to do this from day one without the need for any cookies by importing and using historic orders. It's a single platform solution that consists of four tools that enable automation, personalization, and merchandising anywhere customers and products meet. The four tools are a sales-based search function, fully automated product recommendations, email automation, and audience segmentation. All communication with Clerk's AI happens through our super fast REST API, which has an average response time of only 35 milliseconds. To make the integration into the front end easier for developers, we've also built a robust JavaScript library called Clerk.js, which can be used to make API calls from the front end. Finally, we bundle all of our features into extensions that can take care of most of the heavy lifting when integrating Clerk. In other words, you can freely decide the best way to get Clerk onto your web shop. Now, Let's get detailed. First, there was the API. Setting up the API communication is done in four steps. Syncing your catalog and orders to Clerk, retrieving data from the API, visualizing the data in your front end, and adding tracking for showing statistics and keeping the AI up to date. All of these steps can be handled directly with API calls to various endpoints. Let's start with authorization. Each webshop domain, called a store in Clerk, has its own unique instance, which is accessed by a set of API keys. A public key, which gives you access to endpoints exposing non-sensitive data, and a private key, which which, combined with the public key, allows working with data on the store and accessing sensitive data like customers, orders, and more. Syncing your data can be done with a CRUD API endpoints, which allows you to get, post, update, and delete resources on demand. On your first synchronization, make sure to send as many historic orders from the web shop as you can. One of Clerk's primary differentiators is that we have no learning period, because we can utilize all of the existing orders from day one to understand the current customer behavior. Apart from that, start with sending at least your products and categories. If your web shop also has content pages like sizing guides, about us, blog posts, and so on, we highly recommend syncing these as well. Once data is synced, the AI analyzes everything and builds intelligent indexes that are retrieved through unique endpoints, depending on the use case. For example, fetching the hottest products is done with recommendations trending, and showing the top products for a search on Star Wars can be done with Search Predictive. All endpoints require you to send the public key, and endpoints showing results need the limit argument to control how many results to return. Additional arguments depend on the endpoint you're calling. For example, complementary products will need a list of product IDs to find accessories for, and any search related calls need the query argument to find matches for whatever the customer is searching for. You can inspect the necessary arguments for any endpoint in our documentation. Per default, Clerk will return any matching results based on the API call you made. However, if you want to narrow down results, you can use filters to only get back a specific subset of products. For example, maybe you only want products that cost at least 30 euros, or you only want products from a specific brand to be shown on any particular page of the web shop. Filters can also be combined using the logics and or. With these, you can group any filters that you want to based on any data points you're already sending to Clerk. As a baseline, the API will always return the IDs of the matches Clerk's AI found. With these, visualizing your data is often done by making API calls server-side, retrieving the IDs of products, for example, and then fetching all the product-specific information from your own webshop platform or PIM before rendering them. Clerk's API can also be configured to send back any resource-specific information you already sent to Clerk, like prices, brand names, category URLs, block cover images, and so on. With this, you might not even need to make an extra call to your 
your PIM before showing results, which will give you a much faster setup. Lastly, tracking must be added to keep Clerk's AI up to date for personalizing the visitor's results during their session and also for us to be able to show analytics. Tracking in Clerk consists of four parts. Generating a visitor ID for each unique visitor, adding descriptive tracking labels to any API calls returning results, which will be used for showing analytics for the individual endpoints, logging a visitor's clicks on products shown by Clerk, and logging each individual order as it's placed on the webshop. The session ID is also called the visitor ID in Clerk. It's used for logging the activity of a user during a session on the webshop, like products that were clicked, searches that were made, categories that were browsed, and so on. An example of doing this could be to use PHP's unique ID function to generate a unique ID that stays the same for at least this current session. However, it can be a good idea to generate the same ID across several days, like for example a week, to make sure that you keep the statistics of what happened if visitors come back to the site. Once this ID is generated, it should be included in all calls to Clerk for the tracking to work. Labels must then be added to any calls that return results, like your search results or alternatives on a product page. The labels argument is a list containing at least one string, which is the label for this call. We recommend using labels that contain the page each call is used on and the type of results it shows. This makes them easy to distinguish in analytics. Then you should lock each click on a Clerk product with lock click. Simply include the ID of the click product in addition to the key and visitor ID. It's important to only make this call when the product click is actually shown by Clerk and not the webshop platform itself, as otherwise it'll look like all products are found and bought through Clerk. Lastly, use lock sale to track the order as soon as it's placed on the webshop. Each order consists of three data points. An order ID, a list of products that were bought, which can be sent either as a simple ID or objects containing both ID, quantity, and unit price of each product that was purchased. Then also include the customer's email address. This is not directly necessary, but highly recommended as Clerk uses it for personalizing specific recommendations types and also for segmenting with our audience tool. With the visitor ID included in the lock sale call, Clerk will understand which products were shown clicked on and then finally purchased. This allows the AI to always stay up to date and change results on the fly based on customer behavior. And that's it. After following these four steps, your Clerk integration is up and running. The coming sections of this video will outline the tools we've built to give you maximum flexibility in integrating our API on any platform. Apart from using the CRUD API, it's highly recommended to add a backup sync method. After all, any number of things can fail with API calls. Maybe your price server crashes or a product attribute contains an error that causes several calls to fail. No jinx. Luckily, you can sync in multiple ways, including using a data feed as a daily backup for your CRUD calls. This feed is a JSON file containing the current state of the webshop's catalog. This means that any data available in the feed at the time it's loaded will be what Clerk has to work with. The only exception is orders, which are locked and do not need to be included in the feed after the first import. As such, using the data feed is also a great way of preloading Clerk with orders. The feed should just be available at a URL that can be accessed by our importer, which you configure in the My Clerk IO admin panel. There are several ways of securing your feed so only our importer can read it. Check more about this in our documentation through the link in the description. Next up is Clerk.js. Clerk.js is a JavaScript library that simplifies the integration of our API with your frontend. Overall, there are three benefits to using Clerk.js. It's robust as it's loaded asynchronously, meaning the rest of the page is not depending on an API response before loading. It's often faster as your server can start rendering the page in parallel with Clerk.js making calls and rendering results. And visitor and click tracking is handled automatically for any results shown by Clerk. This requires no cookies as we generate a hashed value of the visitor's IP and user agent combined with a unique store salt that rotates every 30 days. Clerk.js is loaded by adding a lightweight tracking script to the header of the website. This script loads the library from our CDN and lets you access its functionalities through the Clerk object. You'll notice that the script configures Clerk.js with the API key, so it already knows which store it's making API calls for. When the page is loaded, Clerk.js scans it for any snippets with the class Clerk. It then uses the attributes from the snippet to build an API call 
while getting the API key from the config in the initialization script. When the response is returned from the API, Clerk.js grabs the data and builds a full HTML block before inserting it into the snippet itself for the browser to render. The visual representation is handled by the design, which is also referenced by the snippet. Let's build one as an example. A snippet is a span that has the class Clerk, an endpoint, and various data arguments. For example, the amount of results to return can be set with data limit. Labels are added in data labels, required arguments like product IDs are added in data products, and so on. By analyzing the calls in your browser, you can see that the data is sent and received in the exact same way as when using the API directly. For visualization, Clerk.js uses Liquid, also known from Shopify, to render HTML with the data returned by the API. These should be formatted as scripts with an ID that you can reference in data template of your snippet. To make it easier for non-technical end users to make adjustments to the results and designs after installing Clerk, snippets can also be simplified to only include a reference to a template within Mitre clerk.io. These are called content blocks. Designs are then handled by a visual editor or with liquid HTML code, just like in the front end. With this approach, most of the configuration is done in a user-friendly way from the admin panel. Your snippets will only need to contain the class clerk and any page-specific info like product IDs, plus a reference to the ID of a content block in data template. The extensions we built all use this approach to add elements to the front end, which you'll learn more about later in this video. Clerk.js is very flexible and allows for all sorts of configurations. As I mentioned earlier, if you prefer managing session IDs manually, you can configure the visitor parameter that Clerk uses in API calls. You can also turn off session tracking entirely by setting visitor to none. For styling purposes, you can add both formatters and globals, which will be available in your design scope, whether you use our design editor or liquid designs. Formatters are used to influence or change attributes. Maybe you only want to show the first characters of a description, or you need to calculate a specific discount percent based on a type of customer who is logged in. Globals are meant to be used with front-end data that you want to access in designs. This could be the remaining amount for achieving free shipping, the name of a logged-in customer, a currency symbol, conversion rate, and so on. Clerk.js also comes bundled with a set of UI tools for important elements. With these tools, you can save significant development time for custom solutions. For example, the search dropdown kit allows you to create a snippet that monitors the input field through a CSS selector and then displays a dropdown with content matching a visitor's search. Facets allow you to extend your existing search page or category snippet to include facets for filtering products on the search page directly or in categories. When building more customized setups like for B2B businesses, you will often need to react on or change the results from Clerk before rendering them. This is what events are made for. These allow you to set up event listeners that run code at specific times before, during, or after results are rendered by Clerk.js. A common use case is that you might need to check which user is logged in and fetch specific prices for their customer group or remove products they're not allowed to see. For example, an event can run immediately after Clerk's API response, letting you call your pricing database with the ID of the customer and the product returned by Clerk to fetch the correct prices before Clerk inserts the results for the browser to render. In events, you can access both the parameters of the snippet itself and the API response data, so you can manipulate both in any way you want to. All right, so now you understand Clerk's API and how Clerk.js interacts with it. Let's talk about how we further simplify the setup through extensions and integrations. We differentiate between the two in how they're installed and how much of the setup they can handle. Extensions are installed in the platform as packages that bundle the feed, API calls, and Clerk.js, letting them take care of the synchronization, tracking, and inserting snippets. Examples of this include Magento 2, WooCommerce, and PrestaShop. Since the extension will be on your server, it can be extended or changed in the code as you see fit. Just make sure to keep your changes separate from the extension's call files to avoid them being overwritten when you update to a new release. Most extensions sync data by creating endpoints on the web shop that are then accessed with the public and private key, just like if you were doing CRUD calls. When you run a data sync, Clerk's importer accesses each endpoint to receive the data in JSON format through pagination. Integrations use the web shop platform's API to sync data, while snippets must be inserted manually to the theme files. Examples of this 
this setup includes Shopify, BigCommerce, and Lightspeed. Integrations are hosted on Clerk servers, so while you can't modify their code, they contain various configuration options from the data page in MyClerk.io. If you believe an integration is missing valuable data from your platform, please don't hesitate telling us about it. We do improve them regularly based on customer feedback. If we have an extension or integration for your platform, we do recommend using these to simplify at least parts of the installation. However, you can still choose to only use it for syncing data and then use the API for custom snippets in the front end. In other words, think about them as toolkits that you can use to any degree you see fit. You can always build a full API integration, regardless of which platform you use, if that's better for your web shop. Okay, by now you should have a good overview of how Clerk can be integrated into any web shop. However, you might be left wondering which setup is right for you. I can't give you a right and wrong answer here. It entirely depends on the situation. Doing a Clerk.js integration is often the fastest and leaves the non-tech employees of your company with way more control of the setup after the integration. You also don't have to worry about tracking and adding server load as Clerk.js works in the front end while the page is loading. The reasons for doing a full API integration often revolve around the complexity of configuring data and have Clerk.js match your business logic. For example, if you're developing a B2B store with unique prices and catalogs for each locked in customer, it might be easier to make API calls server side and then use filters to apply your business logic or even apply the business logic after Clerk returns results. Also, if you need to do a quick switch from another API to Clerk, it's usually much faster to simply replace and configure API calls than doing a full Clerk.js installation, at least initially. Finally, when building an app, it's usually easiest to use the API for connecting this to Clerk. This is Clerk's technical platform. To summarize, Clerk is an e-commerce personalization tool that makes your customers better customers for you. All communication with Clerk's AI happens through our super fast REST API, which has an average response time of only 35 milliseconds. The API setup consists of four steps. Syncing data, retrieving data, visualizing results, and adding tracking. To make the integration easier for developers, we've built a robust JavaScript library called Clerk.js, which can be used to make API calls directly from the front end. The library has a multitude of configuration options to match any type of setup and any platform. Finally, we bundle all of these features into extensions and integrations that take care of the heavy lifting when integrating Clerk. Should you still be left with unanswered questions or use cases you want to know more about, we would love to talk to you. Simply open a chat on any of our websites or write an email to support at clerk.io. We can't wait to see what you'll build with your new AI e-commerce personalization assistant. Ta-ta and farewell, my fellow e-commerce geeks.